grasses of one kind or another occur almost everywhere, and their seeds are extremely nutritious. After all, grass seeds in the form of wheat and rice feed half the human world. Grass seeds also feed countless wild birds, and in Australia, an entire family, the grass finches, eats almost nothing else. But there is a catch. Grass seeds contain little moisture, and birds that eat them need frequent access to water. This is especially true in the hotter and drier parts of northern Australia. Here, any small desert water hole is visited throughout the day by a constant parade of small, lively, colourful birds, each needing to drink every hour or two. Grass finches also occur across Africa and tropical Asia, but they are especially well represented in Australia, where there are 18 native species. These birds are extremely popular among aviculturists around the world, and one species, the zebra finch, rivals the budgerigar and the canary as the world's most popular pet bird. Commonest and by far the most widespread of all Australian grass finches, the zebra finch occurs almost everywhere except the eastern mountains and coastline. It differs from most species in that there are obvious plumage differences between the sexes. The birds with orange cheek patches here are males, the others are females. Grass finches in general, and zebra finches in particular, are among the most sociable of birds, and often congregate in large flocks. But grass finches are more than just sociable. Like humans, most birds maintain a sort of personal space around them, seldom invaded except in courtship. Not so the grass finches, which habitually cuddle freely together in actual physical contact. The zebra finch is better adapted to desert conditions than any other grass finch. Even so, the birds suffer heat stress in exceptionally hot conditions and resort to gaping and seeking shelter in the shadiest spot available. Gaping produces its cooling effect by allowing evaporation from the moist inner surfaces of the mouth. The birds are reasonably safe in the shade from predators, but exposed when they must finally emerge to drink. Then they're usually nervous and wary. Hawks of almost any species are among the most important of the grass finches' predators. And the birds are instantly alert to the presence of any hawk patrolling overhead. This spotted harrier, for example, will certainly grab a zebra finch given half a chance. But this is one of the reasons grass finches gather in mobs. It's good tactics for small, defenseless birds to congregate in flocks. Any predator, thus overwhelmed by too many tempting targets, is quite likely to become too confused to carry out a successful strike.
Water is one factor that has changed profoundly in the zebra finches world since European settlement. Now, artificial water sources in the form of bores and dams are scattered across the landscape, including places where water was seldom available before. These, of course, are built by station owners for watering their cattle and other livestock. But there's plenty to spare for small, thirsty birds. The result has been that grass finches may now be far more widespread, though not necessarily any more numerous, than they ever were before. Now, few stock dams and boars are without their associated flock of grass finches, coming frequently to drink. Unlike the zebra finch, the long-tailed finch is usually most common in dry open woodland and its distribution is restricted to the tropical north, mainly west of the Gulf of Carpentaria and across to the Kimberley. Like the zebra finch, it needs convenient access to water and it too seems to have profited from the proliferation of boars and stock dams across the north. A frequent companion of the long-tailed finch at such boars is the very similar masked finch. Much alike in distribution, the two species very often occur together, though their habitat preferences are not exactly identical. Masked finches tend to outnumber long tails in grassland, the other way around, in open woodland. Perhaps the easiest way of telling them apart is to note the warm brown head of the masked finch, contrasting with the long tail's blue-gray head. Both birds are adept at another special characteristic that emerges when the birds come to drink. Almost all birds drink by scooping water into the open bill, then tilting the head back to swallow it. The typical grass finch style, however, is very different. These birds dip their bills and pump it up, like sucking through a straw. The reason for the difference is unknown, but a plausible suggestion has it that the grass finch technique is much quicker and therefore safer. But the long-tailed finch in particular adds to this a further advantage in its extraordinary agility it can easily reach even the most inconvenient sources of water, stretching down from the most precarious of perches. Long-tailed finches tend to harvest their grass seeds directly from the stem during the wet season but they feed largely on the ground at other times. The distinction seems trivial, but looms large in the lives of grass finches. Especially in arid regions where the ground is both dry and open, fallen seed is available more or less at any time. But unripe seed on the stem can be harvested only at the appropriate season. Grass finches of one kind or another occupy virtually all of the varied landscapes of Australia and the interior scrubs of central Queensland are no exception. Here lives the black-throated finch, very similar to the long-tailed finch in general appearance 
though it lacks the long pointed tail. The black-throated finch exhibits, to an extreme degree, a trait conspicuous among grass finches, but otherwise not common among songbirds. Grass finches mate for life. The pair bond is permanent, extremely close, and obvious in every aspect of their behaviour together. This endearing trait is one of the features that make the grass finches so popular among aviculturists around the world. But the black-throated finch is exceptional even within this company of devoted couples. In this species, the pair bond is so close that it is quite likely that the two members of this particular pair will never be further apart than this throughout their entire lives. This is the nest of a double-barred finch, a common bird in scrubby woodlands over much of northern and eastern Australia. A typical grass finch nest is a roughly spherical structure of woven grasses lined with feathers and placed in a grass tussock or a low bush. Both parents are involved in construction, though the female usually does the building while the male merely fetches materials. Grass finches lay plain white eggs, usually four or five in a clutch. Both parents incubate them in alternate shifts of about an hour, and both spend the night in the nest together. The chicks are fed mainly on seeds, which the parent bird stores in its crop and regurgitates for its brood. Half-grown grass finch chicks are a sight only a parent could love. But they do show at least one interesting characteristic. Baby grass finches have strongly patterned mouth linings, and these strong markings serve to guide the parent's feeding response in the gloom of the nest interior. In some species, such as the Gouldian finch, these markings are so conspicuous as to seem almost luminous. As they approach fledging, the birds look not a great deal unlike their parents, although much scruffier. Like other grass finches, their diet of seeds means that double-barred finches need water frequently, and they visit pools every hour or so to drink and bathe. Especially at such close quarters, the reasons for the bird's popular alternative names, clown finch or owl finch, become obvious. When not breeding, double-barred finches live in groups of only a dozen or two, close-knit but not especially large by grass finch standards.
A good deal of time is spent in preening, especially as evening draws in and the birds prepare to go to roost. Double bars have a habit, common among grass finches but rare in other birds, of building special nests in which to sleep at night. These are entirely separate, both in form and function, from the structures in which the young are reared. Pairs share this roost nest throughout the year, but they are also sometimes joined at night by others of their flock, and up to six have been found in a single roost nest. The double bar shares parts of the Australian southeast with one of the rarest of grass finches, the plum-headed finch, which, as it happens, does not build roost nests. It builds nests only for the purpose of raising young. These are built of grass and usually situated within a metre of the ground, often along a stream bank. They are noticeably smaller than the nests of other grass finches. In fact, the plumhead builds the smallest and simplest of all grass finch nests. Both sexes incubate in alternate shifts, each usually lasting a little under an hour. The eggs take about 12 days to hatch. In the plum-headed finch, plumage differences between the sexes are distinct but far from obvious. Males have small black bibs, females have dingy white eyebrows. The youngsters, on the other hand, are more or less plain dull brown when they fledge and do not attain the full adult plumage until the following year. Even after they leave the nest, the fledglings are fed by their parents for several weeks before they finally achieve full independence. The heartland of the plum-headed finch's distribution is the grassy valleys along the western slopes of the Great Dividing Range, from about Canberra northwards nearly to Rockhampton. Grass finches eat seeds either on the stem or on the ground, but several species do both, depending on season and circumstances. The plum-headed finch, for example, takes much of its food from the stem, but especially in winter, it also spends a good deal of its time feeding on the ground. Nearly as widespread as the zebra finch, the ubiquitous red-browed finch occurs almost anywhere there is shrubbery, throughout the more humid parts of eastern Australia. It shows little fear of humans, and more than any other of the grass finches, it is as much at home in back gardens and urban parks as in the most remote rainforests. It has a special fondness for lantana thickets. Though it usually feeds on the ground, it also sometimes feeds in casarinas, a habit almost unique among grass finches.
Like most small birds, red brows are extremely cautious about bathing and choose only the shallowest and most secluded pools, especially those close to shrubbery. This is mainly so that the birds have some secure perch nearby on which to preen and dry out in safety afterwards. Like many other grass finches, red brows frequently preen each other, a habit so unusual among birds that it's distinguished by zoologists under the term allopreening. Grasses are extremely rare in rainforest, which makes this a very difficult habitat for grass finches. Yet even here, there are grass finches, albeit a scarce and very specialized group. Members of this group, Erythrura, are the so-called parrot finches, most of which inhabit New Guinea, the Philippines, and the islands of the southwestern Pacific. Only one species, the blue-faced parrot finch, reaches Australia, and that only as a scarce resident in just a few localities in far northeastern Queensland. The sexes are alike, but males are usually much brighter in colour than females. In the field, parrot finches are characterized mainly by their elusiveness. Extremely difficult to see, they are usually glimpsed slipping unobtrusively through the foliage. Their favoured environment is the margins of rainforest, close to clearings, natural or otherwise, especially where bamboos are common. Otherwise, almost nothing is known of the habits and behaviour of this rare bird in Australia. In fact, these images may well be the only motion picture footage of the bird ever obtained. Paradoxically, dense grasslands are nearly as challenging as rainforests for grass finches. There may be plenty of food, but that holds true only while the grass seeds stay on the stalks. Once fallen, they are lost in a jungle of impenetrable stems and effectively denied to the birds. But like rainforests, grassland too has its specialist grass finch group the mannequins of the genus Lonchura, often known to aviculturists as nuns or munias. Mannequins are widespread in India, Southeast Asia, Indonesia and the New Guinea region. There are three native Australian species. Rarest of these is the yellow rumped mannequin, which is reasonably common only in the delta grasslands of tropical rivers between the Kimberley and Arnhem Land. Strongly sociable like all the mannequins, it normally occurs in flocks, very often in company with the chestnut-breasted mannequin. Much more boldly patterned than the yellow-rumped mannequin, the chestnut-breasted mannequin is also much more widely distributed being common in coastal lowlands almost everywhere in northern and eastern Australia. Mannequins don't preen each other, they seldom cuddle, and they don't build roost nests. 
Though they mate for life, the pair bond is rather less strong than in other grass finches. The perch looks precarious, and perhaps it is, but this is the mannequin's special world, riding a swaying seed head of grass. These birds feed almost entirely on half-ripe seeds, harvested while they are still on the stem. They seldom visit the ground. Their reliance on seeds at a particular growth stage enforces a lifestyle that is much more nomadic than is usual in other grass finches, and the flocks constantly wander in search of grasses coming into seed. Chestnut-breasted mannequins have moved into agricultural lands with much more enthusiasm than other grass finches, and they are now nearly as abundant in crops of various kinds as they are in their native reed beds. In gregarious and highly mobile birds such as mannequins, getting left behind is nearly the worst of all possible fates. So when one flies, the others don't wait round to argue or complain. It sometimes happens that a good deal of apparently aimless flying about takes place before a startled or restless flock finally settles again. More by a sort of group inertia than any form of leadership. Ornithologists believe that the mannequins are rather recent self-introduced invaders from overseas. If so, the Pictorella mannequin is probably an even earlier colonizer from the same stock. Its stronghold is the interior northwest, and it seems to have been in Australia long enough to evolve many characteristics more suited to a desert environment than to its original grassland home. For example, it's a little more reluctant to associate with other mannequins. It tends to be nomadic, scattering in small groups during the wet, though it often gathers in large flocks near the coast in times of drought. It also spends much more time on the ground, eats more ripe rather than unripe seeds, and consumes far more insects than other mannequins. One of the more subtle hints of its non-desert heritage is that it does not drink by sucking as many other desert grass finches do, but uses the scoop, tilt and swallow method common to most birds. Coastal heaths in southern Australia have this in common with rainforests. Grasses are rare, and both habitats are therefore challenging environments for grass finches. 
But these damp southeastern moors are home to the beautiful fire tail, which is most common where streams choked with shrubbery meander across low, dense heaths. It is confined to southeastern Australia from about Newcastle to Adelaide and is the only one of the grass finches that occurs in Tasmania. Its solitary habits contrast markedly with other grass finches. Usually encountered in pairs during the breeding season, it only occasionally forms small parties at other times. Though the birds will eat any insects, tiny snails, or other small life they might encounter, the bulk of their diet consists of seeds in search of which they clamber nimbly about in the dense vegetation like miniature parrots. Seeds are either nibbled individually from the stem or stripped off en masse. the birds feed on the ground in open areas, gathering seeds and minute insects. They also sometimes gather grit to aid in digestion, though this is less important to grass finches than it is to some other seed-eating birds, such as pigeons, that lack powerful bills with which to crush their food before swallowing. Like other small songbirds, beautiful firetails wait for the most secluded and quietest times, when they feel safest before bathing. Even then, they need to feel very secure indeed before they'll risk their plumage getting completely soaked like this. Bedraggled plumage and the weight of water trapped amid the feathers represents a very substantial load for a tiny bird. It means that flight and agility in the air is temporarily impaired, and the bird therefore feels extremely vulnerable to predators. Beautiful firetail has a very close relative that occurs only in extreme southwestern Australia. This is the red eared firetail, and the two species appear almost identical to the casual observer. Differing in little more than a small patch of bright red on the face and white blotches rather than bars on the flanks. Its call is quite loud and strident, as grass finch calls go, but none of the group has much by way of strong or varied songs.
Within its extremely restricted range, it inhabits dense heath and riverside scrub in Jarrah forests, mainly between Perth and Bunbury. In many respects, the red-eared firetail is the opposite of everything that is characteristic of the grass finches as a group. It is, for example, essentially solitary rather than gregarious in behaviour, and is more at home in the trees than on the ground. Many birds in difficult environments are generalists rather than specialists, and the red-eared firetail reveals this trend in the versatility of its foraging behaviour. It feeds most often low in trees, gathering in grass stems as far as it can reach before changing perches. However, as here, it also feeds very often on the ground, either in the open or in dense cover, such as this vegetable patch. It sometimes visits flowering banksias and similar shrubs to nibble at the flowers, and has even been recorded sipping nectar like a honey eater. Australian grass finches are essentially birds of the tropics, but one small group is better represented in the south than in the north. Members of this group have in common a bright red rump and are often referred to as fire tails. One species, the painted fire tail, inhabits arid spinifex grasslands in the interior, where it's especially common in rugged breakaway country. Painted fire tails seldom move far from the vicinity of permanent water, which may explain their curiously patchy distribution. One hint of possibly other origins is that, like the Pictorella mannequin, the birds drink by sipping rather than sucking. The seeds of spinifex constitute the staple diet, gathered almost exclusively on the ground, usually the bare earth between tussocks, but they also eat small insects. The bill is rather more pointed than is usual in grass finches, an adaptation for probing for seeds and insects in tiny crevices and between small rocks and pebbles. Painted firetails build their roughly spherical nests on the ground or in spinifex clumps. On the ground, the birds sometimes build first a platform of small stones or fragments of wood before starting construction on the nest itself. At first, the male does most of the fetching, carrying and building, but the female joins in to help add the lining.
The nest of the closely related diamond firetail is similar in that it too is constructed mainly of grass stems, but differs most obviously in being built usually in a bush or tree at any height from 1 to 30 meters above the ground. Feathers are often used in the lining. However, one of the most striking aspects of grass finch behavior happens before the nesting season begins. This is their extraordinary courtship displays, in which the diamond firetail is perhaps the preeminent performer. The details vary from species to species, but the broad outline is similar in all. As the mating season approaches, a courting male begins a dance that consists of a series of rapid bounces up and down on his perch, usually a twig high in a dead tree. These jerky movements become so vigorous that the perch itself often bounces up and down in tune with his movements. this dance with a grass stem, anything up to a meter in length and usually held by one end. He may approach a female to perform this display or the female might fly up to join him on his perch. As the display intensifies, he turns his head to her peering downward in the same posture nestlings use in begging for food from their parents. Mating takes place either at the nest or on the display perch. As her nest nears completion, the female prepares to lay her clutch of eggs a process that needs a substantial boost in both her protein intake to form the egg and her calcium intake to form the shell. Calcium is available from several sources, including any bleached bones that might be lying about on the ground. Common in dry open woodlands throughout southeastern Australia, but not Tasmania, the diamond firetail feeds almost entirely on the ground. The birds usually forage in flocks, even during the nesting season. The problem with seeds as food is that nature sees to it that they are protected with a hard, tough outer covering or husk. Cereal grains resist even human jaws unless they're first ground into flour. The seeds that grass finches eat may indeed be much smaller, but not necessarily any easier to crush. This is where the significance of the grass finch's distinctive conical bill comes in. The fact that it comes abruptly to a short, sharp point means that it delivers formidable leverage at the point where the tips of the mandibles come together, on the same general principle as pliers or garden shears. In the northern tropics lives a grass finch that seldom leaves the immediate vicinity of water. The crimson finch, like the mannequin, is a bird of grasslands, 
and it too feeds largely on half-ripe seeds gathered off the ground. It also eats large quantities of insects. It is in fact perhaps the most insectivorous of all the grass finches, as this pair committing mayhem on a swarm of aquatic mites enthusiastically demonstrates. of its natural range, especially pandanus swamps, the crimson finch has adapted well to changes in land management and is now, for example, one of the commonest of small birds in the sugarcane fields of northeastern Queensland. A rather unsociable bird, it lives in family parties rather than flocks. Preferred nesting sites include the base of pandanus fronds, although, unlike other grass finches, it quite often nests on or near houses or sheds. Across much of the tropical north, where the grass finches reach their greatest diversity, they are very much in decline. Fire may be one of the reasons for this. These days, the effects of natural fires are multiplied many times by fires deliberately lit by humans. It might be true that burning clears the ground and makes seeds easier to find, but on the other hand, it destroys the plants that cast the seed in the first place. The details remain unclear, but there's little doubt that overburning has had far-reaching effects on tropical grasslands, probably to the overall detriment of grass finches. This glamorous bird may be the chief victim. Once the star finch occurred from Cape York and the vicinity of Rockhampton, right across the tropical north to the Pilbara and southward into New South Wales. But the last half century has seen a severe decline and it's now common only in the far northwest. Somewhat more than other grass finches, it favors lush, tall, streamside grassland of the kind most seriously damaged by fire and slowest to regenerate afterwards. So it seems likely that habitat degradation might be the chief cause of its decline. The starfinch lives in small groups, typically about 20 in number. It is rather sedentary, not given to the nomadic wanderings that characterize several other grass finch species. It occasionally feeds on insects such as flying termites, but its chief food consists of unripe seeds gathered on the stem. Only when forced by drought or fire does it descend to forage on fallen grass seeds on the ground. Even then, the flocks stay together, young and old alike. Juvenile birds are nondescript brown and can sometimes be difficult to identify if it should happen that there are no adults close by to give the clue to their identity. The grass finches are a colorful clan, but the Gouldian finch undeniably outshines them all. 
Aside from its exotic plumage, one notable characteristic of the Gouldian finch is that it is polymorphic. Individuals in any population may be red-headed, black-headed or yellow-headed, although the last is very rare, and black-headed birds usually outnumber redheads about three to one. It is also the most seriously endangered of all Australian grass finches. Though it remains common in some remote areas, its numbers have nevertheless declined markedly in recent decades. The Goulian is also notable as the only grass finch that habitually nests in cavities in trees or termite mounds, although one or two other species occasionally do so. Often the birds nest in groups of half a dozen pairs or so, and sometimes several pairs may even share the same cavity. The nest itself is rudimentary, just a few wisps of grass to line the cavity, and sometimes not even that. When they fledge about three weeks after hatching, the juveniles look plain, dull, greenish-brown, very different from their spectacular parents. Gouldian finches are partly migratory. As grasses dry out in the interior during the dry season, the birds drift towards the coast, spreading back inland as the following wet brings rain to rejuvenate the interior grasslands. Always they need frequent access to water. In especially hot weather and towards the end of the dry, hundreds may come to drink at the vanishing water holes. They gather in the tops of trees nearby. Then when all is safe, they fly down in groups to drink together. finches have been affected more than most by the far-reaching changes brought about by European settlement of Australia. Water is now far more widely available, but on the other hand, fires are more frequent, and large numbers of cattle now wander across the landscape, their grazing exerting a profound influence on the relative numbers and seeding patterns of various grass species. Few Australian grass finches have been unaffected by these changes, and several, especially the Star and Gouldian finches, have been severely reduced in both range and number. But now, a great deal of research and conservation effort is focused on finding ways of reversing this trend, to ensure that colourful and vivacious sights like this, now so rare, will once again become common across Australia's tropical north.